historical perspective on the art of violin playing since the beginning of the recording era. Yehudi Menuhin, part two. We are listening to the Scherzo Tarantella by Vinyavsky, which Yehudi Menuhin recorded in 1932 at the age of 16. Yehudi Menuhin was born on April 22, 1916, in New York City. His parents, Maruta Sher and Moshe Mnuchin, which is a Russian pronunciation of the family name, share the same origin. Both were born in Russia, both went to Palestine, where they met for the first time. Both then came to America, where they met again, fell in love and married. Yehudi's mother, a very intelligent person, was immensely fond of music and literature, especially Russian literature. Moshe Menuhin, descendant from the Hasidic rabbis, studied in the yeshiva in Jerusalem and at the same time studied mathematics. In the United States, Moshe made his living teaching Hebrew as well as mathematics. 
when Yehudi was born, the family language was Hebrew. So, this was his first language. Later in his life, Yehudi acquired English, Russian, French, and German, among others, all languages he speaks with almost equal fluency. His book, Unfinished Journey, is a brilliant example of his writing talent. Yehudi, as well as his two younger sisters, Hepsiba and Yalta, never attended a regular school. All subjects were conducted by their parents at home. At an early age, the children were already reading the Divine Comedy in the original version. Yehudi began to play violin before he has reached the age of five. By this time, the Menuhin family lived in San Francisco. Yehudi's first teacher was Sigismund Anker, but his progress in the first year was insignificant. Yehudi's mother somehow persuaded Louis Persinger, the notable violinist, pupil of Eugene Isai and the concertmeister of the San Francisco Symphony, to accept five-year-old Yehudi as his student. Yehudi Menuhin described his first encounter with Persinger in these words. Of the many reasons I have to hold Persinger in loving remembrance, none is greater than his setting high my sights from the beginning. At our first lesson, I was told to play some little thing and was advised on this and that. But there, preliminaries speedily dispatched. Persinger invited Ima, mother in Hebrew, and me to sit down, took up his violin, and announced he would play for us. With admirable intuition, this man, who made no profession of teaching little children, chose not to stun us with pyrotechnics, but to exalt us with one of the noblest works ever written, the Adagio from Bach's Sonata in G minor for solo violin. At the time, aged five, I knew only that the music was very near to me and very moving. We sat spellbound, Ima and I, until the last note died away and stillness filled the room to overflowing. Then went home, still transported to another plane of existence, drunk on Bach. I knew this sublimity was what I must strive for. Let's listen now to Yehudi Menuhin playing this adagio from Sonata No. 1 in G minor for violin solo by Bach.
that was the adagio from Bach's Sonata Number no. One in G minor for violin solo played by Yudi Menuhin. Louis Persinger's main idea of violin playing was to sing and to sing and to sing. The violin is second only to the human voice. It must be considered as a singing instrument. Eudi totally absorbed this basic idea, which along with his remarkable musical individuality made his playing so unmistakably menuous. Listen now to two of Yehudi's early recordings with Louis Persinger accompanying on the piano. The first is Romanesca by an anonymous composer, arranged for violin and piano by Joseph Achron. The second is Allegro by Fiocco. These pieces were recorded in 1928 when Yehudi was 11 years old. Thank you. 
That was Yehudi Menuhin with Louis Persinger at the piano playing Romanesca by an anonymous composer and Allegra by Fioca. In 1925, the eight-year-old Yehudi performed the Symphony Espanol by Lelo with the San Francisco Symphony. Since then, Yehudi's reputation grew rapidly. In the same year, he was given his first Italian violin, a beautiful Grancina. To have an Italian violin, that was Yehudi's dream. In the unfinished journey we read, Here was a bed of roses, giving rise to a recurrent dream. I recall this much. Fritz Chrysler walks onto the stage of Carnegie Hall. The ovation swells, then dies abruptly, when people, among them myself, sitting in the first row, notice something peculiar. He is carrying two identical violins. From the edge of the platform, he extends one to me and says in a solemn voice that easily carries through the hall as if this constituted his recital. Take it, my child. It is yours to keep. On February 17, 1926, at the Manhattan Opera House, Yehudi Menuhin's New York debut took place. He was nine years old, and his program consisted of Handel's Sonata, Symphony Espanol by Lalo, and Paganini's Concerta in D. An interesting note, among the audience attending the concert were Papa Heifetz and Papa Elman, obvious recognition of the importance of this event. Listen now to Yehudi's performance of Paganini's stratospheric virtuoso piece, La Campanella, which Yehudi recorded in 1930 at the age of 13. <laughs>
was Yudi Menuhin playing Paganini's La Campanella at the age of 13. This concludes part two of our program dedicated to the great violinist Yudi Menuhin. This program is part of a series of programs entitled An Historical Perspective on the Art of Violin Playing Since the Beginning of the Recording Era. My name is Yuri Belyavsky and I wish you a very good day.